seen before, so we never know. According to Eddie Butcher, he's got something for him. Okay, let's take a look right now at our fighter stats head to toe. Two very interesting matchups, as we said. Gibson at 28 years old, Butcher the same. Slight height advantage to Gibson. Weight is about the same. The arm reach measured finger trip to finger trip with the arms extended. Almost dead even. What about the rest, Jeff? It looks like everything is so even down the line. The uh, the main difference in this, even their knockouts, percentage-wise, both of them look good on their knockouts. I think uh, with a height difference of two inches doesn't make any difference because the arms and leg reach are still as close. And that's what makes the big difference is if that arm or leg reach is different. And they seem to be very close on that. So it's going to uh, have to be decided in the ring. Okay, Manson Gibson and Eddie Butcher scheduled for 10. The FFK North American Light Middleweight Championship coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Sheridan Lancaster Golf Resort and Convention Center. Pat Scanlon along with Jeff Smith scheduled for 10 in the light middleweight championship. Manson Gibson and Eddie Butcher. Let's take a look at our rules for FFKA full contact karate. Scoring on the 10-point must system, the standing eight count is in effect in Pennsylvania. Three knockdown rule, if you're knocked down three times in one round, the fight is over. A fighter can be saved by the bell in the last round, and a minimum of eight kicks per round is necessary. Right, right now, let's go into the ring with Lee J. Nelson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sheridan Lancaster Golf Resort and Conference Center in beautiful Lancaster, Pennsylvania for an evening of ESPN Championship Karate. These fights are sanctioned by the Pennsylvania Athletic Commission Commissioner Howard McCall and the FFKA Terry Nye President. Our officials at ringside, Greg Sherb, Executive Director and George Miller, Deputy. Our judges, Mike Gerhard, Marvin Preston and Gene Gockenauer. And our referee for this bout will be Paul Kears. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's throw some dynamite. This fight is an FFKA 10-round North American Light Middleweight Championship bout. Introducing, in the red corner, he hails from Chicago, Illinois. He's 5 feet 11 and a half inches tall and weighed in today at 162 pounds. He has a record of 30 wins, five losses, 24 of those wins by knockout. Please welcome in the red corner, Manson, the master blaster, Gibson! And his opponent in the blue corner, he's from Baltimore, Maryland. He's five feet nine inches tall, weighed in at 164 pounds. He has a record of 23 wins, two losses, 16 by knockout. Please welcome in the blue corner, Eddie Butcher! Well, Eddie Butcher is certainly the more vocal fighter inside the ring. We would say he's more colorful, uh, colorful uh, outside the ring, and Manson Gibson looks like in his... Uh, his shoot boxing tights uh, that he's the more colorful in the ring let's see what happens when they actually go head to head yeah, a very different look for Manson Gibson with the uh, the tights and the boxing shorts the referee Paul Kears scheduled for 10 for the FFK North American Light Middleweight Championship right hand by Butcher that was a hammer he came with that overhead right hand, and Manson Gibson was trying to put off a couple kicks just to loosen up. And Butcher gets his respect right away. He loaded up on the big right. Butcher is known for his power. He can land some haymakers. Now let's see if Manson Gibson has what it takes to come back up off the canvas and keep Butcher away. Manson trying to throw a lot of kicks in this situation here. Spinning back first by Gibson missing and Butcher answering. Manson Gibson is still hurt. This is not a smart move on his part by trying to throw a bunch of kicks while 
Eddie Butcher is in the process of trying to throw some haymakers on him. He needs to calm down and use his hands here a little bit till he gets his composure. Past the midway point, round number one. And Manson Gibson is a fighter in trouble. Butcher definitely has the stronger hand techniques. And that time, I think he just lost his balance. He tried a spinning back fist. His head's not clear yet, that's for sure. Another spinning back kick. And Gibson is just hanging on the top rope. Manson Gibson's kicks are very weak here. I think he's still a little bit stunned, but he shouldn't be trying to throw those kicks. He should be focusing, getting his rhythm, his footwork. He's got his mandatory kicks in. Trying to survive the round with eight seconds left, and he will. Wow. The champion, Manson Gibson, dropped in the first round. Well, Eddie Butcher has been taunting Manson Gibson the whole, whole day today and yesterday. And, of course, this first round, he's continued that and uh, gave him not only the verbal lashing, but now he gave him a little bit of a, a physical boxing lesson here in this first round. Eddie Butcher's corner trainer, Sterling and Darian Butcher, a family affair. And Manson Gibson's up off the stool already. You would think he'd want to stand on the, uh, stand the stool. Look at that right uppercut by uh, You saw that it started off with the spinning back fist, and as he missed that, Eddie Butcher landed that solid round kick to his right over the heart side, right up there on that chest. That takes a lot of damage. Shouldn't Gibson have stayed on the stool longer? He definitely should have. Round two, scheduled for 10 for the FFK North American Light Middleweight Championship. Pat Scanlon and Jeff Smith here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Butcher. Earned the champion's respect very early on in the first round. Gibson needs to get a little rhythm back in his techniques. He seems to be going a little wildly. Working the body in the corner is Gibson. His kicks don't appear crisp, Jeff. Gibson. Butcher lands the more solid kicks and the more solid punches. This is a 10-round fight, and maybe part of Manson's strategy will be to to land a big haymaker like that and on a spinning back fist, but he might be trying to save a little energy on those kicks. But at this point, I don't think uh, in the first round, he just had it. Gibson loading up the spinning back fist as Butcher, the aggressor, came in. Going for the spinning hook kick. That right hand that Butcher landed on him just then did a lot of damage, uh, more than it appeared, because it caught him right behind the ear. It's a very effective. Good left hook by Manson Gibson and the, the mouthpiece out of the hanging from my Eddie Butcher's lips. You know, when two fighters start off with this kind of pace, sometimes uh, the, the tide may change because of the conditioning factor here. You don't want to use up all your gasoline in the first or second round. Left jab gets in by Butcher. Manson has a good left hook, seems to be his most effective tool so far, but he's only landed one time. Butcher just sticks with basics. One, two punch, back leg round kicks. Okay, final stages of round number two. Back with more Gibson and Butcher after this. And we are back at the Sheridan Lancaster Golf Resort and Convention Center. I'm Pat Scanlon along with Jeff Smith, ESPN Championship Karate. Pat, you notice how, how Manson's sitting in that uh, kneeling position there. This is a Japanese style. Uh, this is how the kickboxers uh, in Japan will sit. They won't sit on a stool. They'll sit in that position and get their rest. Eddie Butcher on the traditional side in the stool. Oh, an even second round. First round going to Eddie Butcher scoring the knockdown against Manson Gibson of Chicago. Round number three, scheduled for 10. 
One of the drawbacks I feel in sitting in that position, it cuts off the circulation in the legs and it doesn't allow you to regain the uh, strength that you need. In, from a sitting position, you can get a little blood circulating in those legs and get the endurance back in them. Butcher with a right hand. And he has been more aggressive with his fists. Butcher has a good overhand right that uh, Gibson is going to have to figure out how to block or this fight won't last too long. He has a tendency to, uh, to wind it up. Gibson trying to stay on the ropes. Do you see that powerful back leg round kick by Eddie Butcher? Then comes in with his basics one-two punch. And those kicks do take a toll on the body. Both fighters, 28 years of age. Butcher making faces, trying to taunt Manson in there a little bit. Gibson has spent seven years in the martial arts. Butcher in the black pants. You see those colorful pants of Manson Gibson's and his kickboxing shorts, the style they use in the Orient. You'll see those in Japan or Thailand. He recently fought in Japan against uh, Kawade. He's won a lot of matches. He gets a, a lot of press in, in the Orient. But that press won't do him any good here today against Eddie Butcher unless he can uh, get a little bit more action going. Yeah, he got pressed to the canvas by Butcher in the first round. Spinning back fist, connecting Gibson to Butcher. And that ends the third round. Well, did that back fist by Gibson steal the round for him? I don't think so. But it was a pretty even round. I don't think that had a whole lot to do with it. Now, uh, it seems like Manson Gibson has switched to the stool. I, I think it's a smart move by his corner because it does allow the legs to get a little more uh, rest in the corner. And you do need those legs not only for kicking, but for moving around in that ring, especially in a 10-round North American title fight. Original Island. The trainer for Manson, the master blaster Gibson. And as the team approach with Sterling and Darion Butcher. Now here is the early action from this fight. Gibson See, backing in. Here comes Butcher with that overhand right. And Gibson just could not react. And that's what Gibson's going to have to be watching for. Butcher's going to be throwing that again, I'm sure, in this fight, now that he knows it works. Round four, scheduled for 10. And after that start by Butcher, we didn't think we'd be into the fourth round. But Anson Gibson has been able to collect himself and come back. You know, some fighters are what's called slow starters, and Manson Gibson definitely got off to a slow start here. And if there was somebody that was a fast starter, definitely Eddie Butcher did that today. Well, Gibson had told us in his last fight, he lost the previous 11 rounds and came back in the 12th round for the knockout. Gibson has chosen to fight off the ropes, and Butcher has been the, uh, the aggressor. Well, there's definitely a psychological advantage here for Butcher, too, knowing that he can hurt Manson Gibson. And Manson Gibson, so far, not proving to Eddie Butcher that he can hurt him. The wide open eyes of Eddie Butcher moving the head around, stalking Manson Gibson. Butcher slowing the pace down a little bit here and just kind of checking out Manson here. Gibson said, give, or Butcher said that Gibson's just keeping the belt warm for him. There's that big overhand right hand. Almost throws it like a bolo punch. The best time to throw that is when the person is trying to kick because that's usually when those hands come down a little bit. And Manson tends to throw a lot of those kicks. Final seconds, round number four. More ESPN Championship Karate coming up after this.
And welcome back to the Sheridan Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm Pat Scanlon along with Jeff Smith. Fifth round action coming up for the FFK North American Light Middleweight Championship. And Manson Gibson comes out spinning and kicking against Eddie Butcher. I think Manson's corner is probably relaying a little uh, message to him. If he wants to win this fight, he'd better get back in the game here and start taking it to Butcher a little bit. And he seems to have regained his presence, both physical and mental, in the ring after that first round knockdown. So far, Eddie Butcher is definitely in control of this fight, and if Manson wants to win it, he's going to have to go back and get a little respect back from Butcher and, and take this fight away from him. We've enjoyed our stay here at the Sheridan Lancaster. What a complete golf, tennis, and convention center. I played 18 holes uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. Beautiful course here. You shot par, but it was only for the first two holes, pal. No, no, I shot a 72, but that was for the first nine. Now Butcher moving in on Gibson. Midway round number five. Gibson has not been able, until that left, to really punish Butcher. That's the only thing that Gibson has scored on with him a uh, little bit with the spinning back fist, but that left hook is uh, Manson Gibson's best weapon. Eddie Butcher's is that right overhand. And the opportunity for the left has been there by Gibson who tries to connect on an uppercut. And Butcher throws punches from all angles off and off balance. This is the first round that Manson has really come back and uh, started taking any kind of control of one round. But <laughs> Butcher trying to change that around here in the closing seconds. Final seconds, round number five. Referee Paul Keir separating the fighters. And look at the smile on the face of Eddie Butcher. You know, when you're in there fighting and you have a, an opponent who's uh, a tough opponent and, you know, you're slugging out in there, sometimes you give a little wink or a smile just to, to let him know that you appreciate that fighting style. Eddie Butcher in with his whole family in the corner there. Sterling and Darren. Let's take a look at that left. Just <laughs> moves away on that one. Just moved away. Didn't look like it caught him good on that one. Another look at that looping left hand. Boom. You see how it knocked on that angle? You could see that it caught him. Butcher was going with it a little bit, so it didn't take as much out of him if he was solid and standing in one place and not moving so much. And Gibson continues on the stool. Strategy he may have, uh, maybe should have employed after the uh, first and second rounds. He definitely needed this in that first and second round. It is Butcher who greets him with a side kick. He was off balance though, and as he was spinning there, and he kind of caught him in the back, so. No penalty or no, no warning. Nice double kick. Manson Gibson kind of hesitated that and then caught Butcher up by the head. Oh. Butcher trying to throw the spinning back first. It sounded like it landed pretty solid, but uh, Butcher went down, but Butcher's the one that landed it. There's another spinning back fist by Gibson. He was beginning to assert himself in round number six. Now Butcher fights back. Maybe Manson better not make him mad. And Butcher, a uh, little bit of showboating there, waving the right hand at Gibson. Gibson's going with a kick and an off-balance left. Bear in mind that Manson Gibson is a fighter who has knocked out 17 opponents by kick. The way Gibson is spinning around there, I don't know how he keeps from getting dizzy. He just keeps turning, turning, turning. It's very dangerous because you're taking your eyes away from your opponent. And if they step inside and land that right, big right hand, they can end the fight on a counter move like that. 30 seconds left, round number six. And Gibson does look spent. Smart move on Butcher's part. Lay on him there, get him tireder. Make him hold up his whole weight. 
That's the best hand combination Gibson has thrown yet. Nice one-two. Both of them landing square. Butcher winding up with a uh, upper hand right. And we'll take a break. More ESPN Championship Karate after this. Manson, the master blaster Gibson, who has knocked out 17 of his uh, 24 victims uh, with a kick on the KO side of it. He's 30 and 5 overall, 28 years old from Chicago, Illinois. You know, Manson is throwing a lot of kicks, but they're not real powerful. Only a couple of them in there that look like strong enough to do some damage. And Eddie Butcher. 23 and 2 out of Baltimore, Maryland. 16 knockouts to his credit. Battling for the FFKA North American Light Middleweight Championship. Scheduled for 10. Good footwork by Eddie Butcher moving out of the range of those kicks of Gibson. You can hear Butcher's kicks when he lands, even on the arms of Gibson. You can hear the sound. Gibson on the left, Butcher on your right. Butcher a more imposing figure of upper body strength. Another good right hand by Butcher following that right round kick. And Gibson just keeps coming with those kicks in hand. Spinning back fist. Scoring by Gibson. Butcher tries and misses, but there's a good short right hand by Eddie Butcher. Gibson trying to be more defensive uh, through leg kicks, Jeff. Gibson needs to keep his hands up a little more. I don't know if it's because he's tired, but uh, when he's kicking, his, his hands are too far away from his head and his body to protect it. See how as he pumps that leg out, his hands are down, nowhere to protect him. It's very dangerous. Final seconds of round number seven, a spinning back to scoring for Mason Gibson. And a good overhand right hand that got in by Butcher. Well, Jeff, he said he was carrying his hands too low, <laughs> was Gibson, and Butcher scoring with a strong right hand. Let's take a look at the back fist here, Jeff. That caught him flush. You don't land him any cleaner than that. Eddie Butcher showing. There he throws his, and then he follows it back up. Boom. And then he rushes into that right hand. Does a lot of damage when you're charging in and catch it square on the chin. So, nice exchange by both fighters. See Gibson stretching out, showing that flexibility. Almost forgot his mouth guard. Gibson on the left, Butcher on the right. Round number eight. Eddie Butcher smiling, shaking hands, touching gloves there. He's having a good time. And then an off-balance fall by Gibson. Eddie likes to rumble. When he's mixing up like that, he gets real happy. And we said to Eddie, you have a nickname. He said, hey, isn't Butcher enough? Call him Eddie the Butcher. And a flurry to the head of Manson Gibson. Gibson sneaking in that left hook again. That's been his, his most effective weapon. Even though he's thrown a lot of kicks, they don't seem to have done any damage to Eddie Butcher. Well, we wondered if Butcher, uh, who lost weight from dropping from 187 to 164, would be affected. The stamina and the uh, strength appears to be there. It depends on how much body fat you're carrying. 
depends on if you if you're losing more muscle mass then it's going to affect your strength but if you're just losing body fat it's actually going to make you faster and stronger sometimes there's that spinning back fist that gibson has went to time and time again in this fight both these fighters looking lean both of them looking not much body fat on, on the bones there Manson doubles up on the left to no avail as we... He needs to use that left hook. He just throws it to the head. He needs to go down to the body with it and then come back up to the head. Because Butcher is just trapping it off his gloves now. Final seconds, round number eight. We'll be back in Lancaster right after this. Eddie Butcher of Baltimore, Maryland. You can believe he's knocked 16 people out with punches. If he's used them with that overhand right, there's very few people that'll stand up to that. Manson Gibson deserving a lot of credit for coming back after that one in the first round. This round number nine is canceled for 10. You see how Gibson is kind of moving forward now. And I think he knows he's gonna to have to go after Eddie to take this. Referee picking up some things on the floor there. Looked like some ice from one of the corners. Don't want him to trip or slip on one of those. Good job by Paul Kears. And Gibson going to work with kicks. If you notice on the, the foot pads, there's, there's nothing on the bottom. That's just their foot. There's no sole on the bottom of those shoes. So if you step on a piece of ice, it can uh, can affect your footing, especially if you have the other kick in the air. This is where Gibson's been able to use that back fist, spinning off the uh, ropes. You see him holding that leg in the air, trying to get Butcher to walk into it. Now he's leaning against the ropes for balance as he does that. You, you won't see him do it as much in the center of the ring. That's a good front kick by Butcher. That had something on it. Manson needs to stay off of those ropes. Spinning back first, throws Butcher. Butcher is still hurt. His legs are wobbly. He said, where are you? He said, I'm not sure. That's an equalizer. His wow. hands are still down. Butcher needs to get his hands back up. Late stages, round number nine. Manson Gibson almost hit him with that round kick. If he would have, that would have knocked Butcher out. But Butcher just instinctively moved his head. I still don't think he's real clear and knows where he is. You no, know, he looks a little, uh, a little groggy and wobbly. He swapped reps. He survived the round, however. Nice exchange. Here's Manson Gibson bringing the crowd back to his side. And now, this time, no stool. Goes back to that kneeling position. That's not a good idea at this point. You know, this being a, a North American uh, light middleweight championships, and here you got a guy who has the opportunity to take it away. He needs the rest in that corner, sitting on that stool. And here is the knockdown, Jeff. He gets all his body into that one, catches him high on the head. To, to knock somebody down, catching him that high on the head has to be a tremendous blow. You see, he gets his whole body into that one. See how Butcher's neck bent. And Butcher only made seven kicks, so not only will he lose a point on the knockdown, he'll lose a point for not making his kicks. So he'd have to make up nine kicks in this 10th round to avoid another penalty point. You have point. to remember, they both had knockdowns. So that kind of evens things up there, but that penalty point will, will make it even more of a difference. But at this point, I felt Butcher has a lead that's gonna be hard for Gibson to come back on. Round number 10, this is it for the North American Light Middleweight Championship. Good left hand by Eddie Butcher. Manson, if he wants to have a chance, I feel, on winning this fight, he's gonna have to take this round big, even after that last round. 
Eddie Butcher, if he wants to win it clean, it should come back and try to take this round. So this is where the title is decided, especially by the fans and the spectators. The kicker against the puncher. And Butcher doing the work. Both these guys want that title. No matter who's ahead on points, they both want to win this round. It's what you call the respect. When somebody knocks you down, you give them a little respect and you want to take that respect back. Gibson attempting the back fist. And it floored Butcher in the ninth. And missing wildly. There's a good left hook by Gibson. There's another left. That's been Manson's best weapon. Less than 30 seconds to go, and let's see if Butcher is going to try to take it back here and take this round or let Gibson have this round. Butcher trying to pile up points late in the round. But Manson answering with a powerful left. And, and there so. it is. Manson Gibson puts his hands down and he is a tired fighter. Here's Eddie Butcher thinking he has it with his guards up. Well, these guys go the distance. Ten rounds. Both he fighters floored. Gibson decked in the first. Butcher floored in the ninth. This is going to be an interesting decision. Uh, both fighters having a knockdown. Butcher losing a point on kicking. Uh, it's going to make a it's going to make a difference in the score. All right, we'll be back with the decision. Manson, Gibson, and Eddie Butcher for the FFKA North American Light Middleweight Championship. We'll find out who owns the belt after this. And we are back at the Sheridan Lancaster, where the FFK North American Light Middleweight Championship hangs in the balance. Manson Gibson and Eddie Butcher as we take a look. Gibson on the left, Butcher on the right. Early action. You see those one, two, three, four, five. Butcher trying to rack up the points there in that last right hand, knocking Gibson off balance. There's to the head, to the body. He's hammering those blows in there. The last one seems to be the most effective. Catches him on the jaw and he's off balance. All right. Let's go now to Lee J. Nelson for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision. Judge one scores it 95-94. Judge two, 95-94. And judge three, 96-96. The winner and the North American light middleweight champion in the red corner, Manson Gibson! Well, Manson Gibson improving, who defends here in Lancaster. Both fighters uh, won the appreciation of the crowd. Right now, let's go to uh, Jeff Smith. Okay. And here we are in the ring with our new world champion, our North American champion. Congratulations. Still the champ, sir. Still the champ. We'd like to go to Terry Nye with the presentation of the belt. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to defend my belt, and I love you for it. All right, all right. Let's stick this around your body right. here. It's mine still. Chicago, I love you. Tie that on there for him. Come on, Mr. Nye. Tie my belt back. Come on. Taking it home. So what do you want to do now, Manson? Stay to the North American champion. A few more tune-ups, then maybe I'll be ready for a world contender, another world champion. But as of now, I want just this belt. Well, Manson is our new North, I mean our... Reigning. are reigning and defending his title as the North American champion. Chicago's only world champion. He also holds other world titles, and he's after this FFKA world title. FFKA all the way. Thank you very much for both of you guys. I don't have much to talk about. I fought enough. Thank you. Well, I think he did his, his fighting in the ring and his talking. He said he was going to let his fighting also uh, happen in the ring. It looks like after that first round knockout, though, knockdown, knockdown uh, I was very concerned. How about I you? 
I felt like that's what I needed in the fight because I had got to what he was saying. His tactics did work. I was so frustrated, and I didn't give him respect. But after the first round, that's good. I'm here to stay. It looked like it took you about three rounds before your head started getting clear, though. How did you feel after that first round? After the first round, I knew that I wasn't in trouble. I knew I'd have a lot to work. The first thing I thought about is I'm down two points. So I had to make up at least two rounds so to make the fight even, and then we fought from there. Did you feel you had hurt him at any, po any point at all before that knockdown that you actually knocked him down in the later round? The fighters, it's not a point that you hurt them. That you can keep hitting them and they might be hurting them, but they're not going to go down. So you have to give them respect and just keep the pressure on. This was a 10-round fight, not a one-round fight. Thank you. Were you surprised he went down in that ninth round? No. I was just wondering that he didn't stay down, so it didn't matter. What was your best weapon, you felt? The spinning back fist. The kicks, he was already ready for the kicks. So it put too much pressure on me to keep kicking, looking for the 18 KO. The left hand and the right hands worked. That's why I'm a fighter, not just a kickboxer. And he keeps his title. I'd like to thank on behalf of the FFK, Terry Nye, the president. Thank all of them and our current and still champion. Let's give him a big hand.